I'm AC Dodd and this is Engine Club. Okay, so what we've got on the bench in front of us, uh, Kevin's taken his uh, bits and pieces out. There's a few extra parts, which will, um, the reason why they're on the table, that will come clear a little bit later. But um, we've got the main gear set. Uh, what else we got? We've got the lay gear, got the input shaft. Um, we've got the selector forks. We've got the differential, uh, the lay shaft and everything else. So what we're now at the stage of is, is having a look uh, at all the bits and pieces just to see what's serviceable and equally uh, what parts we actually need for the build um, one of the things that uh, Kevin's interested in on this build is uh, he's not doing your usual let's go fast road Kevin wants a nice big cruiser so he wants a nice big fat torque pump of an engine he wants a oomph <laughs> from so uh, you know tractor pulling straight from his wellies <laughs> idle up to 5,000 revs loads of torque nice. and uh, high gearing so we can waft along so uh, what we're going to do here is um, we're going to build something with a 2.9 final drive it's got a 3.1 at the moment um, the decision to change that's been helped along by the fact that uh, we've got bits and pieces that are basically trashed so um, what we're what we're basically looking at here is things like if you look in the root of that teeth you'll see those those lines there and that's where it's actually gone through the hardening. So that needs to be replaced. And that's the uh, pinion that goes with the 3.1 uh, crown wheel that was fitted in this gearbox. So if you've got to spend 100 quid odd replacing that, then you might as well change the ratio. So we're going to go for a 2.9 final drive. Um, together with that, because we're building a torque pump, this single ring gear set with the standard ratios uh, isn't actually the best application. So what we're gonna, what we're thinking of doing is changing it for the twin ring gear set with the wide four to one ratio first gear. And that basically means there's a bigger rev drop between the gears, but because we're building a big old torque pump, uh, this engine's gonna have plenty of torque to pull that with a 2.9 final drive. We've even discussed whether we wanna go 2.85 to one by putting on the um, an economy input. That's the standard input gear with 29 tooth. If we put a 28 tooth one on, uh, we could increase that to effective final drive ratio of 2.85, but uh, we, that's a little bit, we think, well, I think that's a little bit over the top, so we're gonna give that a miss. We're gonna use the standard input, so we'll have 2.95 uh, with a twin ring gear set. So we haven't got all the bits for a twin ring gear set here. I've, I've gone through my stores, and um, what I mean by twin ring, see those identification grooves, one there, Second one there, that tells us that's a twin ring gear set. Whereas the standard one would look like that with only one identification. So we just need a second gear because the second gear I've got here is absolutely trashed. You can see the the, the, uh, the dog teeth on there are, are, are machined off. So we're gonna have to buy one of those, I think, to make that up. Uh, we have got a decent twin ring lay gear. So that's at least workable from that aspect anyway the next thing we're going to do is to start to go through through this so i think what we're going to be doing on this gearbox is realistically probably buying a we're going to buy a rebuild kit yeah rebuild we, kit and new, new bearings of, yeah new bearings new second gear and then yeah make good between everything else and obviously change the um final drive um as well yeah, okay. That'll get us there. All right. So uh, actually, uh, what we laid out on the, on the bench was, you know, starting to have an inspection of all the bearings. In fact, we're going to change all these anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, I did find a, a damaged um, uh, needle roller that goes between the third and first motion shaft. So that, that was on its way out anyway. Um, somebody's already been in here and done a rebuild. So um, the, the actual hubs and things are very good. So we'll take that apart in a minute so you can have a look. Um, but we do have... A worn, a worn uh, third, fourth hub. So we'll show you that. So if we actually put that on the gear. All right, so we have a look at there. If you just give that a wiggle, see that? That's actually quite worn. So we're gonna replace that uh, third, fourth um, selector fork. So looking at the uh, first, second hub, we can see the dog teeth on this are pretty good. So this is, uh, this is, um, in very good condition considering so someone's already been through here and they changed a lot of this so that saved kevin an absolute fortune because normally these are trashed and i think these are something like 250 quid or something for a new one so uh you know th 
he's getting off lightly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, as again all the bolt rings are pretty good as well so um, in this case as we already said we're going to use a rebuild kit from mini spares so um, uh, or, or, or guess works I don't know which one we're going to go with yet um, I'll just see what comes in the bearing kits um, but uh, the point is we're going to build a nice gearbox out of all this um, there there is some damage which I'll, I'll just put in into this picture now And what that basically shows us is the uh, that bearing starting to fail, uh, which is the one between the first and third motion shaft. If you've got any of that in your um, in any of your bearings, not just that one, but in any of your bearings, then they've got no place going in a new rebuilt gearbox. So you need to throw them out. So if you have damage like that, um, absolutely, you need to replace. Okay, now you heard me mention earlier about the the wrong reverse idler. So that's the one that was in it and someone's replaced that. And this is the one that should be in it. And the one that should be in it, in this A plus gear set, is the one that's got that spacer on the top. And if you don't fit the right one, what that basically means is when you engage reverse with this one, uh, you've only got half the teeth engaged so you need to think carefully about when you rebuild your gearbox to make sure you actually get the right gears in although it will work and they work reasonably well i wouldn't want to go dumping the clutch in reverse um so if you do the auto testing and that you want to make sure you actually get the right reverse idler in so that is the selector input shaft what's wrong with that one kevin well obviously it comes straight out of my gearbox and uh, it should be nice and solid but with a little bit of, well, not very much force, we can move it and that's not going to be very good for selecting, is it? Ah, so what you've actually identified there is uh, a future fault, because although that wasn't moving uh, when it came out, but that could have come loose. So uh, one of the things I always do with these is put them in a vice and give them a bit of a tweak. And if they spin around like that, uh, they simply need welding back into position. So we can weld that up and it will be uh, good to go. But the point is, it's something that needs checking because this is a quite common failure on these gearboxes. Right, so that's it for today, Kevin. So what have we learned about gearboxes? Well, it's nice to come to the end, end of the day, a brain full of, uh, full of jargon. <laughs> Most of the jargon I'm probably gonna get mixed up many times over, but, uh, but yeah, really good day of, of, of learning and, and discovering really inside my, inside my box. The nice thing is I've got some good parts of the box, some parts that need to be changed in terms of preventative um, for the future because really want to be able to fit this and, and enjoy then driving the car not having to worry about taking it out and then replacing things further down the line um, but really the, I suppose the biggest thing of learning for me is about all of those wear components which bits wear where do they wear why are they wearing at a faster rate than others um, and then what we need to do and actually probably the other biggest thing I've learned is how expensive it all is <laughs> to do all those all those little bits that you think oh well it's only a selector fork and then you look it up and you know it's 120 quid or <laughs> 150 quid here and if you keep going adding it all up all of a sudden you've got you know two and a half grand's worth of gearbox and you think i paid less than that for the car yeah two and a half grand's worth of standard gearbox yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah this isn't like wow well, you know you've, you've gone you've gone all out so uh yeah but great learning process as per usual and uh, yeah, looking forward to part two when we can start getting more into into the meat of, of exactly what we're doing and start. The yeah. other thing we've uh, discussed today as well is talk about the application. So the ratios. Yeah. yeah. So um, what have you learned about that? Yeah. To well, it's it's all about trying, for, especially you know, with, with with mine understanding how I'm going to use the car, what I'm going to use it for, and as I said to Aid, you know, I, I live reasonably close to to Bista Village, and I want to be able to go and do like the the. Um, uh, Bista Village, sorry, um, Bista Heritage. I want to do the Bista Heritage runs on a Sunday morning, go up there and you know do the coffee runs and all, you know, collecting cars and all that sort of stuff. Um, so there'll be some, you know, reasonably fast A roads, B roads, the odd bit of motorway and stuff. So I'm going to be cruising most of the time. I'm not going to be driving around a town needing first, second, third, all of, all of that. So that was the whole point behind wanting to make the engine really torquey, and then. That's why we've then gone through all the different iterations of what we could do with the gearing and how that will then make it drive so that we could build a gearbox that matches the engine that I want um, to give me the drive that I want. 
So effectively, it's not just taking your gearbox apart and then putting new bits back in. It's actually changing the ratios of the gear set and the final drive to match the application. Exactly, and that's 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 the beauty of coming here is is you know not only with my, my learning and making sure that I've got a fantastic box to go with a stonking engine, but it will all match. It's not just going to be, it's not that it's not the pub talk thing of what's the, what's the bottom line of your power figure that in a stupid rev range that you can't use. It's how will the usability of the engine work with the gearbox for how I'm going to use the car. So perfect. Okay. All right. Well. Uh, it's been another great day, so thanks for coming, Kevin, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank yep. you very much. Thanks for that.